So I had a Zoom meeting with my extended family and I wanted something to create engagement and authentic sharing. So that's why I asked you all to share a worry. So what I'm gonna share with you is this technique called worry dolls. Anybody done worry dolls before? They're from Guatemala. They come in a groovy little box or a bag and they're handcrafted by humans. And this is a, a technique using real things and showing you real objects is a way of creating an additional connection uh, there's a design guru named John Maida. He's doing brief connective, uh, connecting sessions with other designers and he just uses small objects. And so what I decided to do was a show and tell about my worry dolls. I've used these for about 20 years. They're very inexpensive, available on Amazon. And what I would like to say is that, tell me something that you said you were worried about. If you will, just restate them for me. I'm pivoting a really big national conference to a digital platform, and I don't, I'm kind of worried about how we're going to do that. Okay. I'm worried about pivoting a bunch of client stuff too. We're inundated with clients that need to pivot to from real life to digital. So pivot woes. Is, we all have is, pivot woes. Pivot woes. So this is Miguel. And he's going to worry about pivot woes. I tell him you're going to worry about pivoting and I'm going to put him in the box. He is now worried about that. We don't have to, we've outsourced the worry. So the next one is Juan. What are we going to tell Juan to worry about? Learning how to transform my in-person class to remote teaching and engaging my students effectively in the learning. Mm -hmm. So engaging, uh, transforming to a digital platform and engaging people. All right, so Juan's gonna worry about that. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Caroline, you had talked about, this is one that I, is top of mind for me. San Antonio is getting ready to open up a whole bunch of uh, distance stuff back up to the public because we're Texas and we don't need to worry about that kind of thing. And I'm worried about it. <laughs> so opening, opening up our city or our locality is a big worry for me. And we're going to have Esperanza, her name means hope. She's going to worry about opening back up. Safe. I would, I would say we put two of those in there, but you know, the whole distance. Oh, well. All right. So let's put Maria in there too. But well, we can't, they should distance, right? Or no, that's the worry. <laughs> Sorry. Now I'm worried about it. Oh, never mind. Go ahead. All right. Somebody said, I'm worried my remote meetings will continue to suck. Should we put Amparo on that one? And then we have one more, Paloma. What are we going to have Paloma worry about? Oh, Carla, you'd said keeping your clients and staff safe. I would Ooh. add not just clients and staff, but I'm worried about my husband. Family, family. And I'm worried about vectoring it. I'm the one that goes out to shop and, you know, go secretly to key co-working and stuff like that. So I'm <laughs> worried that I'll vector something in. So we're keeping... still about 20 days away from even considering opening, but yeah, my mom's Im immunocompromised. Mm. And it's like, if any of us get sick, she gets right. sick. Yeah, we're worried about anybody we know. Does anybody already have somebody who's sick? Like bad sick? Tom? Not super bad, but my wife was sick. Um, she's getting better, but uh, it, it, was, it was really bad for a couple days. Glad to hear she's getting better. That's awesome. Yeah, I had a supervisor who had uh, COVID, but is, is healed now. All right. Really good news. So Paloma is going to worry about everybody we love getting through this. All right. And so they're on this. We don't have to worry about that right now. We're going to put those aside. And what my section of the digital feast was designed to do is create more connection. And the more you can get people sharing their true feelings and their thoughts and their worries and their aspirations, we can deepen that connection. So what I would like to do 
if it, does anybody have any observations about that or additional ideas about creating that human to human connection in a digital way? Are you ready to move on to the next part of the, the feast? Move on. I actually want to shine a light on um, what you have just done, which is to spend what would seem like an inordinate amount of time actually connecting with people on an emotional level. So interesting that you bring that up. I'm sure I'm not the only one that has been impatient with what I call chit chat or drive by or social niceties. Um, I have often thought, let's just get to it. Chris and I uh, have a lot of folks that we have only met remotely. We've worked with them for years remotely. I'm thinking about Max. Um, Max is a developer yeah. that is Russian and he is now living in Thailand and he's been with us for t almost 20 years, I would say. Yeah. And he's a, he's a great guy. And I know about his daughter and his wife and you know where they live and what they like to do. And the reason I know this is he insists on a little bit of human to human connection before he will engage. Because I am paying him by the hour and I am usually in a hurry and I usually have way too much going on. So I'll just get, get with him on Skype and Max, can you blah, blah, blah. And the, what I've learned is <laughs> you have to slow down in order to get stuff through Max. Is that what your kind of thing you're talking about, Kate? Absolutely. It's that whole focus on relationship before task that is so easy to let go of when you're in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So, um, right. Yeah, I use that same um, sort of padding idea in my meetings. Like, I, I know that I'm going to have a call with a client, and it, it, it varies on the client, but. I usually will give myself 15 or 20 minutes of, you know, we're not on a clock. I know we're going to get together. We're going to vent. We're going to bullshit. We're going to, you know, got to get that stuff out of the way. Then we can dive into business. And then at the end, you do a little sort of the same. Uh, this is kind of one of the pet peeves I've noticed that I, I would like to see that's addressed here is at the end of the meeting, I sometimes feel like people are so quick to want to just leave that I really do like having just, let's just sit here for a minute. You know, like we don't have to go right away. We got another five minutes. Let's just think about what we just said. Let's maybe share some more personal things as a, as a way to exit on a nice note or whatever. Uh, and it's those little padding niceties that, you know, it gets you in, it gives you a transition mentally to, to, from all this what to now we're going to focus on this and then on the end i'm going to try to hit you with a couple of nice notes so we walk away we feel good about this instead of walking back into the what you know what i mean i do so i'm going to do a demonstration of um how to apply three principles to keep people focused and attentive on on what you're trying to convey on the information you're trying to convey so the first point on this and i have to remember to draw slowly so my markers can keep up with me think about what the point is that you want to share and do that ahead of time and then while you are talking show there we go. While you tell. So don't just leave it to a talking head. And the third thing, which you are witnessing right here, is to do it in front of people. Because once you do this kind of drawing in front of people, we're all traveling at the same rate on the same path. So those are the three principles. And so I'm going to demonstrate them right now. So here you are. Here we all are in our bubble and we're in these meetings and it seems like they just go on and on and on. And in the meantime, in this bubble that we're in, there are other things going on. So for example, if you are like some of us, you might be thinking during the meeting or before the meeting, if I can just go downstairs, and throw in a load of laundry, I would be able to do more this evening for myself and that chore would be out of the way. Or I'm 
trying to make sure that you can see what I'm drawing. Or you might be one of those people that we talked about who periodically has a cat butt come through the video. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Guilty. That's a bit of a distraction. Or, like we mentioned, you might have little kids who are so thrilled that you are home with them and they are home and all they can think about is why aren't you playing with me or somebody mentioned this the other day it's a beautiful day and there are birds tweeting outside the window and all you can think about is how soon can i actually get outside or there's something that's going on uh, that there, people are starting to study, of course, because it's a great opportunity about this. And I talked a little bit about it, about managing my face. We have this situation now where we have an always on gaze and that's exhausting us and it's not what we're used to. The other thing that's going on that's exhausting is that when we are in meetings and we're able to see each other face to face, we have a lot more um, information, sources of the input than we do when it's just this much of us. So we're trying to interpret how people are feeling, what the backstory is, but all we've got from them is this single face. And we don't have this nice range of emotions. So we're trying to make a lot of interpretations on this emotional scale using very little information. And that's also exhausting us. And then we've got this stealth thing, the thing that's always a distraction for us, but now people can actually see us doing it. And it's the phone and the text messages that we can send and receive and nobody knows. So we've got all of these other things going on. Plus, one more. This is not a COVID virus, uh, but it's sort of looking that way. So one more thing that's going on is I'll bet that there's more than one of these every day on your calendar and about the time that i'm getting to the end of one i'm thinking about the next one and what do i need to do and who do i need to be so loads of things that are taking our attention away from the what's actually going on in the meeting demonstration think about what is an image that will help you convey your message show and tell and draw live that's me not <laughs> um so the last section that we're going to do here uh, in this feast the last thing we're going to feast on um, is doing a little bit of co-creation so in this sense we're abiding by the principle that you all are not here just to listen to us talk um, but to actually engage in a conversation there's value in every person that attends the meeting, and you're not just digesters of information, but you're also co-creators with us. So for this last step, um, we would like to put the prompt out for you all of what ideas do you have to make your digital session more engaging? Um, and then as we go, I will go ahead and capture these ideas. So I put a couple in here already based on the conversation, uh, not to overwhelm the canvas, but just to get us started. Um, so Chris, earlier you mentioned the exiting on a nice note and leaving space for that at the end. Um, Kate and Patty, you just opened up the conversation of getting others to draw. Um, so I want to pass this back to you all of what other ways can we make digital sessions even more engaging? And feel free just to unmute yourself. There's not too many of us here, so we can. I, I, I don't know how to say here. this, but it's kind of what Tom was echoing and, and Kate about um, not having to be 
all of the features all the time just because we can video doesn't mean we should sort of I don't, um, judicious use of the technology i don't know absolutely one of the things susan and i talked about previously was when a session is engaging via conversation right when it's just one person talking <laughs> at you and not really engaging the group but how do you make your sessions a, a dialogue? How do you make sure that you're you're calling on people, right? So that folks are 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 having to pay attention and be present. Um, I don't know. I think I think that dialogue is really really important. You know, this is a great example. You know, just b a bunch of us on this call had um, questions and you know comments to 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 uh, add to the conversation, and it wasn't just one or two people talking at us the whole time. Right, and to kind of piggyback off of what Tom is saying, I'm, you guys know I'm planning a conference, not just a meeting, so it's kind of top of mind for me. Some things that we're planning on doing to engage our uh, audience is to have them prepared kind of to be a working group instead of just listening to an expert. So I think we're going to have to get creative with the platform, but asking people ahead of time, like, hey, come to this ready to put your ideas out there. So one, th this is Patty, one thing I'd like to add that I've been using, no, I'd say over the last two years uh, and recently used on Monday with 80 people is Mentimeter. And I love Mentimeter as a way to engage people with hearing all their voices and all the different ways that you can use Mentimeter. So you can get word clouds, you can do opening questions, you can do quiz. Actually, we did, did a pub quiz with Helene and that was a lot of fun. Uh, so you can use it for a lot of ways to engage and still hear people's ideas. And, and you might not have heard of it, but um, just go check it out. Can you spell that for me? M-E-N-T-I. M-E-T-E-R, Mentimeter. Thank you. Sort of like the, the online polls that you use, except on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's like, great. It's great. So I'm not sure how to say this, and this will sound probably too brutal, but intentionality, essentially, like, are we having meetings just to have meetings? Or is there a great intention driving them and I think there's a there's a really obvious difference when you're in those meetings um, I could tell some bad stories but I won't and I just think to echo other people's points maybe maybe a zoom call isn't what you need maybe some preparation is and definitely a very clear sense of why we're having it and why everyone involved is there not just to be obligatory, not just because we pivoted from a physical workplace to this one, but like really and truly, why are we here? Absolutely. And um, this just inspired something. Who wrote text with their mouse? I did. Mintimeter is actually a, a texting tool so people can, um, they basically text a number and the poll comes up on the screen. So I wanted y'all to know, is it like a texting feature? However, That's my handwriting awesome. is not as good as whoever is actually. <laughs> so, well, just to a little bit of tech nerdery. Um, so I'm using an iPad Pro and Procreate uh, and I'm projecting my canvas from, so if you can still see my video, I've got my tablet here and I'm using a Apple pencil on it. Nice. So that's why it's very different. Um, but I would encourage anyone who wants to draw some things on top of this canvas using the annotate, feel free, even if you just have a mouse and want to write it, um, feel free to contribute or you can add hearts, you can add shapes, whatever you want to co-create this canvas with us. Oh, that's cool. But yes, great point, Lily, about the intentionality. And that's a really helpful tip. She just talked about having a pen. So you, you can do it on an iPad, you can do it on a, you know, there's a, uh, I forget what they're called, but the drawing surface that, that graphic artists use so that you can draw um, using a pen. Wacom. There's, walk, yeah, Wacom. So those are great, you know, because I don't have a whiteboard behind me, but those are great tools to, uh, to figure out a way to use a pen um, so that you can have like a whiteboard experience. Nothing wrong with a plain old whiteboard. Nope. And you can also type on this, so feel free to do that. 
what else what else can we add to this if this can be a, a memory for you of what uh, we talked about and some of the ideas so what i've been doing for some of my meetings if it's going to be longer than say 30 minutes is i will schedule in icebreaker time or catch-up time depending on whether or not i know the person and it's helped get people out of panic survival mode and into more creative hey we're problem solving we have time to react let's actually work on solutions and not just grabbing out straws because it kind of breaks that seriousness that people come in with and it's like it's helped absolutely it's something that so I'm thinking about um, what Carla just said and what Chris has said and the work that Susan does to connect. And I'm thinking the question that I've got in my head is how do we create a sense of like expansive breath during the, the we have this we have this drive on the clock and this schedule on the clock. And it seems like the technology, it, for me, it focuses me more on the task. And how do we create that sense of expansion and that sense of, that pause, that sense of breath? If that makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think there, just to build on that, Kate, too, there is a lot of power in the pause. Um, and we commonly do that in in-person sessions, um, but we often forget about it in the digital world because everything's moving so fast. And that's the expectation with digital is that things move faster. Um, but I got into a conversation yesterday with a colleague about as a facilitator, sometimes your space, your role is just to hold a space for people to engage and talk. And when you do that in the digital world, it is really your role to give people a digital space, to set up a digital room, to give people an ability to engage in a conversation. Um, so you're setting up a space differently when you're working digitally, but still it is about holding that space. And in holding that space, you in person, you would add in those elements of the pause and breathing and reassessing where you are. Um, so I think that's a beautiful point to move to digital as well. Well, and I think pacing, right? So the facilitator manages the pace. Absolutely. Um, so I'm seeing a couple more on here. We've got Google Docs, screen sharing, Mural, using stickies. Um, if you're not familiar with Mural, it's basically post-it notes digitally. Um, there are more tech tools like mind mapping. Um, you can also use those between meetings. Uh, Chris loves the pause. Let's see what else we have in here. Um, someone tell me about the intro activity, the stamp on location. That was mine. This is Helene. Uh, I had a seminar that I was presenting and there were participants from all over the country and in Canada. So as an opening activity, both as an icebreaker and also a way for them to be introduced to the annotate tool because a lot of people on this seminar had never used a Zoom annotate tool. When they entered, they had to go into annotate and put a little stamp on their location. So as an icebreaker, everybody can see where we're coming from. So we had California and New York and Ottawa. And it was a nice way to start chatting because then they opened up the chat box and said, hey, who's in Ohio? I'm only three hours away from you. So that was a, a nice little opening. And I didn't have to worry about tech later on for the quote unquote real activity because they had already used the annotation tool. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, Helene, did you, what group did you say this was with? Um, this was a, a seminar company who hired me to present to their membership. It's called IMS, the Institute for Management Studies. And as long as I'm unmuted, I wanted to piggyback on what you, Abby, and also Kate were talking about, the pause with my sessions because they're around mind management. 
a lot of folks who attend have never slowed down before and have never experienced quiet before. So during these virtual sessions, I've had as long as a seven minute silent period where people were capturing their thoughts. They were just on their own. They didn't have kids in the background. And a lot of them have said, I have not sat still and just thought that way for so long. So we don't have to be on verbally and visually the whole time. Sometimes silence is what people need as well. What time to actually think about what we're doing? That's crazy talk. <laughs> I know. Call me insane. <laughs> well, that's just it. The things that, you know, I've, I, you know I, I'm all about the fast pace. We got a lot to do. We got to get in. We got to get out. But I'm also among the brain of, of the whatever words. I'm not good with them. Uh, the mind that, uh, you know, I, I want to get in and really sit down and focus and really think about it so we don't have to come back and do this again. So, yeah, having that time to feel like it's okay to think and not feel rushed, I think, is priceless. Absolutely. So, Susan, uh, I will pass this back to you to close us up for this. Um, and thank you, everyone, for your contributions. It's been really fun to co-create this visual with you. Um, so I'm going to take a quick screenshot here of this so I can make sure I capture the annotations as well. <laughs>